Welcome back to another video. My name is Rick for those who don't know me. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you a power query trick that shows how you can allocate a yearly budget over the different months in a year. Let's see what techniques we can use. So allocating a budget over a different time period is a very, very common exercise if you want to prepare your data model, because sometimes you receive your budgets on a yearly basis. And you want to allocate it over different months so that your data model is nice and easy and can really easily show the budget in your graphs. So here's how we can do that. Suppose we're working with a table that contains budget for a single year. If we want to split that to the different months within a year, we first need to know all of the periods that fall within that year. And we can start by adding a new column, clicking custom column, and we're going to generate all of the periods, which is 12 periods. So we can open a, a curly bracket, write one, two dots, and then 12. And this will generate a list for us. I'm going to call it periods, a list containing all of the month numbers. So if we go and have a look, those are 12 of them. Now, from here, I actually want to generate the different month names and month, the, the, the month year combinations based on both the year and the month year. How can we do that? The easiest way to do that is making use of the list transform function. So list transform takes a list as input, and then you can apply a function in its second argument. So I can say each, and now I'm actually hoping to have a date based on the year column, based on an underscore referencing all the lists in the first list from list transform, and then just the first of the month. And then if I close my parentheses, I will likely get an error. And I will tell you why. We get an error because the each expression that's here defines a function with a single argument. And that argument is referenced as the underscore. That's the parameter name. So this is identical to, here we go, to this expression and this one as well. So what happens is if I look at the year, it's looking within the context of list transform and within the context of list transform, there is only the list from one to 12. There is no year column. So it doesn't know that, but the year column is visible in the context of the change type of uh, the change type table. So the, uh, basically when you start with table add column, the table add column function iterates over the change type table. So within that context, the year column is available. So what should we do? Well, we can we can keep one of these expressions. So we could, for example, say this each will remain. And then here we need to give a different parameter description. So we could call this X or we can call this anything you like. I could also call this the inner context. So when we're referring to items, I could now say, OK, I want to refer to the inner context. And for the year, I'm going to refer to the underscore here so it can actually reach the scope of that. Now, if I click here, I'm going to have a list of items with the start of each month in the year. Perfect. Based on this, I could now say, OK, actually, I want to turn this into a month year combination. So I could, for example, say I'm going to have each um, and then we could say months, uh, or did these are the start of month dates with the definition, we could add a second item and we could say month year combinations. And then we could use the date to text function on the start of month dates. And we're going to give it a string of month, 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 this is a short month, and then four times the Y for the year. There we go. And then I can close this bracket and return the month year combinations. Uh, let me see. And I still made a mistake here because I tried to do it separately, but actually that date to text part should be within less transform. So just for cleanliness, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to put date to text here, close it down, then have the second argument pasted here. And then it should close down all together. And then if I click, 
I get all of the month year combinations right there. Now, actually, we're almost there. What we can now do is we can expand these. And what happens is when we expand them, the entire row will be duplicated. The number of times uh, for, for the number of row items we have in the list. So since we have 12 items, if we expand to new rows, you will find that the first row is duplicated 12 times. However, there's a unique value in the period column. Based on this, we now actually have a duplicated column here. Now, before we move on, it's nice if there is a data type available. So table add column allows you to provide a data type as its last argument. So we could say type. Now, if you have type list, the expansion means that there is still no data type. But we could also specify a specific data type in the list and say type date or actually text in this case, because we're going to get a text value everywhere. And now if we expand things, you will find that the data type of text is in there. OK. So what have we done so far? We have multiplied each of the rows by the number of months there is. Now we still need to get that amount column to represent a monthly budget. So the easiest way to do that is go to transform, click on standard, divide, and divide things by 12. Here we go. I can then remove the year column. And actually, we're good to go here. And if for some reason for your data model, you'd rather have a date here, you could always remove that date to text function and just return a date because that nicely works together with your calendar table. Hopefully that was useful. Now I know a lot of you haven't subscribed yet to the channel and it would help my channel a lot if you did. So if you like these videos, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.